Chisnall never really got going in that one either, I seem to recall. Another shake of the head after that loose first dart from Ryan Joyce, and the second dart on 19 isn't much better either. Dave, you require 140. Now, OK, he's got down to a Shanghai finish, Chizzy on 148. Never really suspected it was going to come the way this match has been played so far. 88. Ryan, you require 120. These sorts of shots he's usually pretty adept at, and that's a great dart. Nothing in the way. Good Beautiful stuff. Climbs the ladder up to Ryan double top, Joyce. and that's the first break of throw tonight. The contest. 99. Yeah, and he can probably sort of accept, Joyce, that, yeah, the 11 darts are all well and good, but to allow him back in with that 17 darts, that will be wow. potentially very costly indeed, because there are just signs here that Dave Chisnell can start knitting something together. Well, he didn't hit a single 180 in the first five legs. He has hit three in the subsequent three legs. And he back it up with a monster checkout. He's got time. Oh, another one there. Yeah, yeah double 12. Magnificent from Dave Chisnell. 180, 144 out. The bananas' time has arrived. Ninth leg, Ryan to throw first on the various orders of merit that apply. Fizzy looking down at the 16s. Good leg. I'll have to finish it off. It just illustrates how important these Euro Tours are. If you have a great season like Dave Chisnell, that ranking money is more than you'd have got for, say, winning the UK Open last week. And it will get you in the Grand Slam in the same way if you win three of these. Double top for Dave Chisnell to take us the distance. Double 10, it'll have to be. 38. And oh. it's not Ryan the worst thing that could have happened, but it's not a good thing, because he's left on double five. And more importantly, Joyce could win it here. Treble 20 for double 16. Does not get a match dart. 58. Well, Chizzy struggled on double 10. five earlier in this match. That's the target once again. And no bother whatsoever for Dave Chisnell. The first match of the night on day two of the Belgian Darts Open goes the distance. 20 points the deficit. Joy strikes first, single 19. Can't go from here. Chizzy will have a look at this 167. Let's see how Joyce can leave this, though, in the meantime. 87. Dave, you well, that will do. Joyce can only hope and pray that Chisnell does not finish off with a 167 checkout. We have seen the big fish today from Johnny Clayton. 167 for Chizzy on this occasion. That's part one of the equation. That is not part two. Long way over to the left, and Ryan Joyce will come back. Now, he's taken out a 120 finish. He missed tops for the 80 finish. Ryan this is the simplest version of that kind of finish. 20 at top. Clean bed. 40. Match darts missed, and is he going to go out of the tournament Dave having missed darts to win it, just like his mate Chris Dobie did earlier on this afternoon? Missed match darts for Ryan Joyce. Chisnell on strike. He was 4-1 down in this. He's clawed his way back. It's not been convincing, but it might not matter. Single 16. Leaves tops. One dart in hand. Chisnell bides his time and sets himself up for the opportunity. Ryan Joyce can only stand and watch at the back of the stage. And now he can step up and have another crack. Ryan, you've acquired 20. They've both had chances to win it. But Ryan Joyce has just won it, and the top seed and former champion, Dave Chisnell, is the first big-name casualty this evening. There are lots of people out there who think he might win a title this year at the top level. And you just look where he is in the rankings as well. Now, let's see what this can do. Can't find the trouble 19. Smith looking at 160. It's a tall order. And if he doesn't make it, Decker can step in for a second break of throw, and he will get the opportunity. 
I'll tell you what, the questions being 70. asked of Michael Smith in this game so far, it's like he's on University Michael Challenge. They're hard questions. Double 14. Or 3 0. Listen to that. It was loud last night against Landman. It's louder tonight. Michael Smith. But he really wants to leave 48 here. He's not going to do that. Still in three dart territory, and that was not the plan. Yeah, just another little helping hand for Mike the Decker. Double 16 for 5 2, and another break of throw. Three breaks to one in the Decker's favour, and Michael Smith is fast running out of time and running out of options. Look at this. Passion. He's now got multiple opportunities to get himself into Sunday. He's got the fourth dart with him. That's those guys. If he can manage the adrenaline the way it's pumping right now, his heart will be going about 165. Well, Mike Dedecker will be well aware that he might not have even made it here. He needed 11 legs to beat Vessel Nyman in the third round of qualifying. But my goodness me, he's making the most of his good fortune because he is now 97 points away and Michael Smith is nowhere near a finish. And the Decker potentially could round things off with an 11 data here as well. Well, he'll have to bide his time, but that's OK. This has been a tremendous leg considering that adrenaline jump from the end of the last one. And now he's got three clean darts. 51. Michael to get that feeling from yesterday again against a world champion. Well, this could be the best leg of the lot. He was looking at a 13 data. He won't really care about that. Whether it's 13, 14 or 15, Mike De Decker keeps the dream alive in reason. The titles, it's not so much about the secondary door. He wants to open the first door. 118! First maximum for Gerwin Price. Clemens has hit three of them. He's kept Four himself interested in this leg. This game's warming up. Double 13. Not many people have had success on this today. Yeah, but the slice seven. man has. Look at that. Slices through hey, that 12 daughter and takes the lead again. He's, he's dominating this leg, and another in there would leave double 12 for the greatest 138 checkout you've ever seen. 140. You'll have to wait for that. Best of three from here. And Price doesn't miss double 12 very often. He is, for me, the best double 12 hitter on the planet. Well, that no felt score. inevitable after you said that, Paul, but he is going to get more goes at it. Yeah, I think he's just trying to make me look silly. Great grouping, though. If <laughs> double 12 was just a little higher, oh, he would have hit it three times. You require 24. But ultimately, Clemens wasn't there to take advantage of those misses. He's going to require more. Yeah, and Gerwin right Price is not feeling Gerwin that Price. generous. He is a leg Gerwin away Gerwin from the final day here. Game. Andy Orton was finishing off WWE superstars. If you're not. Can't leave a finish. It's all about the setup shots here. Who's got the better one? Penny for the thoughts of the Iceman right now. He's probably thinking the last thing I want to do is go to a last leg decider against the German again. Six. Because it'll feel just like Schindler last week at the UK Open. Yeah, missed a whole load of darts to beat Martin Schindler. Six in total. He's going to set himself up very nicely. Perfectly, in fact. Wonderful setup shot. And it really exposes the frailties in Clemens' setup shot. He has got an opportunity. Can he find another in there? No, he's gone to the 14. It wasn't a good lie for him. We were talking about how well he nestles darts. Why didn't he go for the ball? Price gets his just desserts. Game shot. And slices through Gabriel Clemens. So he will set up that blockbuster game against Gary Anderson tomorrow. Showing any outward signs of discomfort this evening? He's not one to moan and complain publicly ball. about that sort of thing. He, he doesn't like showing weakness, does he? There have been times when he's looked like he's had none anyway. Now then, Peter Wright. To hold throw in 15 darts. 
it cannot be done. <laughs> there is a hex sweeping across this stage. MVG, break a throw, 85. Can't find the double nine. Beat here required 32. And guess what? Another 16 data. And it looks as though it might have gone the other way. Raised eyebrows from Peter Wright. Inside for double eight. Yeah. And well, 17 Peter. data will do. Could use the ball here. I think that would be sensible. Yeah. 90. 25 leaves a two data. The ball does as well. Yeah, just took a moment to just double check, didn't he? And that was sensible play by Peter, right? 64. He you require 72. Well, this is a chance to break. Double six. Double three. Yeah, the lesser spotted 15 data, and it's good enough to break MVG. Yeah, the ton 40 by Michael Van Gogh is 100. met with a 100. It was a vital last start for Peter Wright. He's not down to a finish on throw, but Michael Van Gogh may well be down to a finish and a very manageable one indeed very shortly. Another injection of pace from Michael Van Gerwen leaves him on track, maybe for an 11 data. As he looks to 83. take complete control of this one. We're going two darts. He'll have to use all three. Back three won't be enough. And Peter Wright is going to need the biggest check out of the game here to deny Michael Van Gerwen an opportunity to go into the lead for the first time in this game. He's gone back to the original set, or what looked like the original set that he used at the start of this game. Treble 18 leaves tops, which he has. And he has got tops as well. Back to plan A for the darts for Peter Wright. Tournament. Might we see something similar here? MVG has given himself a chance to force the last leg decider. Just one treble for Peter Wright. One treble gives him a real chance. Oh, 44. no. Oh, no. I believe 130. Well, six starts for MVG from here. And it has to be all the way, surely. Well, you never know, 40. do you? 40 scored there after that single one. He... OK, I mean, he still might win this leg, but it's just another warning sign, isn't it? They keep jamming sticks into their own bicycle spokes, these. But here we go. 135. He has left himself tops for the match, and Van Gerwen might only get one at the ball here, unless he goes 18s. He does go straight at the ball. Now double 10. And Van Gerwen misses two to force the last leg decider, and Peter Wright, the win is there. Can he take it? For a passage into round three. Two more clear darts at double 20 for Peter Wright. And Peter Wright exacts his revenge to some extent against Michael Van Gerwen, who was threatening to take us all the way. And Peter Wright, I think, has got out of jail in that one. Yeah, I was going to say, can you can you refer to a, a Hetta Littler encounter without referencing the UK Open? It's impossible. That's not impossible for Luke Littler. That might be the injection that he wants to get the crowd going. But again, there's not much of a response, I've got to say. Might all be Mike De Decker's fault because the noise in here was deafening when he was winning his second round match here tonight. 105. I'll tell you what might get them off their chairs. A 170 finish, a fourth of the day. Fourth of the day. One from Clayton, two from Joe Cullen. 100. It's amazing how many times Littler hits the ball. But then again, he does go for it more than most. Doesn't get it, but in a good position to potentially get a 4-3 lead. This one has followed a pattern of holds all the way through. Yeah, yet to find that first elusive breaker throw, and 
still have this possibility whereby we might lose another seeded player. It perhaps wouldn't be perceived as an upset 65. So double 10 for Littler. And that's his of the equation. Didn't quite make it, but more importantly, down to 182 after six starts on the Rotanski throw. This is where the whole game can change, where the whole complexion of the match can change in the favour of Luke Littler. Tyski doing his best to stay in touch, but Littler can put his foot on the gas here. I love that thinking as well. Trying to get the 162 on the 18s to lead double 10 again. Well, Rotaiski needs something big and he needs mistakes from Littler. I'm not sure he can rely on both. He might be able to rely on one thing. This is the biggest shot of the match. Luke, you require 56. Take it, you're two in front. Double top. That is a wonderful leg against the dart. He gets an 11 dart at the best leg of the match. So going in, I've got to get me some longer points. It seemed to work really well for him. And I think maybe the biggest compliment that Luke Littler could get is that a great young talent from Austria called Rusty Jake Rodriguez 60. has almost transformed his game to look a bit more like Littler's, to get his darts standing up just like this. 100. Well, that visit of 26 from Littler was only met with 60, so Litaisky couldn't impose himself when he did have half an opportunity to do so. Littler in position once again, and again, Litaisky finds himself where he needs something. 58. Well, he needed one treble at least just to give himself a fighting chance. I think that's a huge helping hand for Littler now, who may well be ushered towards the finish line here, especially if he can find another one of those. Yeah, and that is 180, number six for Luke Littler as we reach what could be the crescendo of this one. And I think it may be. He might have had enough of Christoph for one day. Even with a 133, 95. you sense Luke the end of Christoph is nigh. 14 data, 11 data, what's in the yeah, making here? It's another 14 Luke data. Littler. Luke Littler comes through with the all-important break of throw in leg eight with the 11 data. A nice way to finish things off. He had to play a very patient wasting game there, did Luke Littler. A very different sort of encounter to the one he had yesterday. A bit of a funny turn, didn't he? Uh, during a Euro tour and had to, sort of took three, four weeks out. Yeah, I think that was in Austria, wasn't it? I think it was in what? Grasse, Leverkusen, actually. But yeah, it, wherever it was. Oh, he had food poisoning. Yes, we think they think it was food poisoning, don't they? But. That took a little chunk out to withdraw from that tournament. Luke, you require 124. Could have won even more. How does he do that? Yeah, he is the best in the world at that shot. A blocker dart for most people, and it looks like a marker for it. 59. It is an extraordinary ability. Luke, you require 24. I'd have to ask him. On the He's cantering day. through this New game. Country. He's thrown 39 darts. Last year in the German Darts Championship, beating Wade 6-0. Yes. What is it about him against Wade at the minute? But they have produced some stunning 100. games. And look, as I say, Wade has had some chances in this game. But they have been. It, it's the old Phil Taylor gives you chances. He's One, six, four, so, yeah, quite. 60. To be fair, there have been slightly better chances Luke, than that. A 164, an 81, and a 75. But that's been it. 17 for double eight. One, two, seven, the sexy way, and the whitewash is on. After three legs, he was averaging exactly. Yeah, it's clinical from Humphreys. But he's, he, he's got everything. He scores like a demon. He can finish amazingly. I know that he was in trouble in that World Championship final, but look what he did after. He did it under adversity in the biggest game of his life. But he's already been through adversity in his career, so he was just compartmentalising all of the experience into a situation that he was ready for. He is so clinical at times, you might as well call him Dr Humphreys. Well, it's been a clinic so far tonight, and even James Wade, who's had a very good view of it, has had no answer to it. 100. Oh, look at that first start, it's just begging for more. 100 I think the end might be coming this time. 
I'm not sure he's going to miss 58 in either two, three, or even another visit. Luke, you require 58. Luke Humphreys to win it. And win it in style. An 11 data for Luke Humphreys. His legs in 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 16 darts. Josh Rock was looking at a potentially straightforward 97 checkout for a 3 0 lead. And within the blink of an eye, Stephen Bunting is looking very well placed now to break here, level the game at two apiece. It's so quickly it can change. Six. Stephen you require 96. Fifty-six. Well that'll do with Rock on 176. Bunting. Yeah, would have liked to have taken the opportunity, but again he'll be aware of pressure being applied, and pressure has Stephen been applied by Josh 40. Rock. He can't afford to be as profligate on the doubles as he has been. Yeah, so he isn't, hits it first time, two apiece, level game. Eight. Well, it's ticking along here. Josh Rock, his average is sort of hovering in the, the mid-90s. He's lost the last three legs. He's been on either doubles or single-to-double finishes when Bunting has gone out in the last three Ooh. legs. He's been right there waiting to pounce, but hasn't been able to. As Bunting is up to, his average is up at 97 now. And that's kind of where we expect him to be oh, nowadays, Stephen Bunting. Stephen, you've got 142. And Bunting, you feel that he's never too far away from a, a big checkout as well. And he's had some, well, he's had 16, 40 and 40 in his last three legs. And I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden he produced something absolutely spectacular with double 11. Yeah. And that's exactly what has happened. Stephen. That's what Stephen Bunting has been doing. To 1 3 2. And just another warning shot across the bows of Stephen Bunting. Need to stay on the treble 20 there, Bunting, but ultimately it does allow Josh Rock to do what he wants. He can just stick a ton in, leave double 16. That's what he's trying to do. And it's what he has done. Good response this from Josh Rock after basically watching Bunting race off and not even getting darts at double to stop him in that four-leg spell. Yeah, you could just see Rock was uh, stepping up there. He wanted to get involved. He wanted to get back on the hockey straight away and get throwing once again. He wants to maintain this momentum that he has, but Bunting was just yeah, going through his processes there and Josh Rock has leveled things up. That's a 14 dart of this. Resurgence continues. He'll fancy his chances of taking us to the distance. Or will there be another twist? Well, not with a first start like that. There won't be. Four, three, <laughs> Josh uh, would a sarcastic, a icon uh, ironic, I suppose. Thumbs up from Bunting. Double six for the number six seed. And, and we are going Josh. to an 11th and deciding leg, and we are going to test the hypothesis Steven once again. Will he make it? Game. 12 out of 12. Still great stuff. It was one of the <coughs> best matches I can recall in recent European Tour history. Six. 60 again from Bunting, and he almost slumps to his knees after that one. He, I mean, look, he's got an 160 point average here, uh, lead here, but you what? just wonder whether, yeah, Josh Rock sooner or later is going to make an impression and is going to punish him. That's more like it. Right back in the leg, and it's now about the setup shot. Where's the treble, Stephen? Where is it? Ooh. There it is. Important dart. Wow, in off the post, that one. It's on 40 here. One, Would be 40. very welcome indeed. Brilliant Stephen pressure being applied by Josh Rock. 81. Stephen Bunting, 81 away. Josh Rock, 62 away. Stops, composes himself. Has a drink.
This is closer than Josh Rock has ever got to beating Stephen Bunting. It is the best part of two years since he lost a last leg decider on the European Tour. That was to Kim Hybrex, by the way. And he win another. 62 away. Bullseye is the target. Yeah. Bullseye is found and he's oh, done it once Stephen again. Bunting. It's 12 out of 12. Last leg deciders going the way of the bullet. Fisher is today might well be Gerwin Price. I think he appreciates playing here in this, well, this sort of environment where the crowd isn't really involved and he can just get on with the business of throwing darts. And I think he looked at the end of that match, I think he looked really pleased with how things were Order. maybe just moving in his favour. Might be a different story against Gary Anderson tomorrow. Might well be. Double 14 here for Rob Cross. That is an awful guide. Look at that. That's what he can see. Oh, what a dart oh, well play. What a dart from Rob Cross. Did it years ago. He always asks for three because he goes through an awful lot. He I did see him drain a bottle a short while ago, and he's uh, yeah making good headway with the. Uh, Latest one on the table. He, well, goes through, he goes through more water than Bobby Boucher. I'll have to uh, seek some sort of clarification. Adam and Sandler in the water, boy. Ah, right, okay. In no Gatorade here. 180 to leave, 140 here for Lucas Vanek. This would get him back on track. Just the wrong side of the wire. 65 remaining. Might look at the 25s, Whoa. yes, and does so. Robbie Rigoire, now watch out, though. He's got two potential routes for this. He's going to go for the 19s this time. On occasion, I've seen him go for the 54 first on that. Because he likes to get the right hand Rigoire. shot out of the way first. Then he stays straight on 60 ball, but at the minute, he's favouring the 19s on it. Well, double 10 again. He missed it crucially, didn't he, in the fourth leg? But he yeah, doesn't miss it this time. He is still working out extensively, but I mean that can have an impact on your obviously your body shape and obviously then on your stance and throw. So you just wonder if he manages that or if he just doesn't really pay too much attention. Price does, and other people within this sport who have workout regimes, they, they tailor it. It's all about timing. You can't, for instance, go to the gym on a Saturday morning, do a chest set or a tricep set, and expect to play at your best. You've just got to program it around tournament play. I used to always play a tournament and then train after and yeah, I'd be yeah, ready not. for the next day. That's, that's what really golfers do. Seven, they do the round six. and then they go to the gym after. Yeah, and of course, the other way, you can't afford to let it come off either. So anyway, double eight here for Rob Cross. Never mind bench press is all about the double finishing here for Rob Cross. Now double four likes this portion of the board. Yeah, the night and there. that's one of the reasons why. In this, he may well feel as though he's been held up longer than he perhaps would have liked or indeed imagined. He doesn't like the light, so he's just going to change the angle a bit. Well, 519, so we'll get him oh, down to 170, so it gives himself a crack. I, I don't think, well, it might well be that he's not under any pressure anyway, depending on what Vainig does here. Joe Cullen finished the afternoon with a 170. How about Rob Cross finishes the evening session with one? Well, that would be a nice piece of symmetry for day two here in Visa. 80 points is the cushion. 170 is not happening. Bainig, now, 180 from 250 would leave 70. That leaves the 14s. He's just taken out double 14. Maybe that is the route to glory here. Big ass, though, to get the 180 in the first place. But I've seen Mensur do this. I saw him do it in Gibraltar a few years ago. Well, now you've just got to get to a finish via a treble. Six. That look Robbie tells you an awful 72. lot. It could be the end. Yeah, that not, ain't, not just of the game, but the end of the day. That ain't going to cut the mustard at this level, and Rob Cross takes out the treble 20. He's now looking at double six, and he's got two clear darts. He's got one more clear dart at double six, and that will do it. But my goodness me, Rob Cross was made to work hard for that one.